We did a study in Tanzania uh, quite some years back. What we found was that something like 85% of rural households in Tanzania had been adversely affected by traffic accidents. Either the breadwinner had been in an accident or somebody else in the family had been in an accident and therefore the breadwinner had to stop work and look after the, the patient who, who had been uh, injured. It had really, in many, many instances, had made the, the, the family totally destitute from a single traffic accident. The things which should be done to help improve road safety uh, in rural areas, particularly to improve uh, rural access. I will say first and foremost, we should look at improving uh, localized difficult sections, what we call uh, sport improvements. Sometimes they have to do with simple river crossings and then uh, slippery slopes. They are so slippery and their vehicles find it difficult even to climb. If such areas are fixed, it is likely first you improve safety, secondly you improve access. Then let me also talk about data uh, quality. Once you have data, in terms of inventories are done, you do inventory, you know, to understand what is happening on the road from time to time. Then you can easily fix simple areas which require improvement. And so data a collection on the various access road network to be able to understand what is happening and then fixing those localized problem areas and then we are okay. The lessons learned uh, over the years uh, are that one, data is key in understanding the level of uh, 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 injury, uh, the burden of injury and crashes. With regard to passenger service and freight, all the vehicles, or the services provided by private sector. The private sector uh, is interested in recovering the investment, also maximizing profit. So you find that they are less interested in uh, taking care of the safety of the people. So they overload to the extent that the vehicle cannot, doesn't have space Considering that even the roads are not all that good, you find that uh, rural communities uh, use vehicles at a very high risk of uh, accidents. My experience with these people, because I have talked to the investors, vehicle owners, they tell you that how do we recover uh, our investment? Because you find that even those vehicles, there are those vehicles which are already old. You see, that is one. So nobody is ready to put his vehicle or her vehicle in the rural roads. It is only when it has saved in other areas, when it was new, now it is old, it has failed to compete in other good roads, so it is taken to the rural areas. This is the case. So I find that uh, sometimes a lot of people there do not have licenses, they have never been to school, they have never been exposed to road safety aspects and what what. So in, in this case, I would uh, uh, suggest that uh, the government could come in and influence introduction of these maintenance facilities, uniting those operators to have such facilities. Otherwise, to have an arrangement whereby those uh, vehicles could be maintained, because maintained, that is one of the causes of accidents in the rural areas. Yeah. The consequences downstream of what happens from a traffic accident in, in countries where there is no national health service, there's no social support, these are quite dramatic.
So when we do our network planning, we also have to take into account these, these factors and these issues, not just look at how fast we can get uh, a truck from the, from the port to the railway station. You know, we've got to look at all aspects of rural life and rural livelihoods.